Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm just going to make welcome my panelists. Um, we have Tolagbe Martins. A round of applause for her, please. She's the managing director, Logic City Fleet Services Limited. A round of applause for her. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay. Also, we have the executive director, Ladies with Balls, impression of Ori Funke Lawal. A round of applause for her. All right, so it's just going to be the three of us having this discussion. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So the, the theme for our session is values check. Values check, leading with in integrity and um, I'd just like us to do a, a quick recap of what integrity really means. We have young ladies and gentlemen here who are leaders in their schools. And I am sure that they've, you know, had one way or the other experience leading with integrity. But I'd just like us to, from my own experience, um, share what integrity really means to us. Um, let's start with the way lady with balls. <laughs> I really love the name. Okay, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good to be here, good to be here. So integrity, two things I'm going to mention. Uh, number one, it is doing what is right. Having a reputation of doing what is right. And number two, doing what you say you will do. Wow, wow, doing what you say you will do. Amazing, amazing. Man, do you want to? Add to that? Actually, um, okay. that's pretty comprehensive because it sounds very simple to say, but <laughs> I think the whole reason we're here is because it's not easy to do. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm going to say this. Um, in this world of social media, how do we ensure that we can lead with integrity, that we can do what we say we will do? You know that... Hmm. I don't know if I should give examples, but in this world of social media, you see people doing what they say they, no, doing things that they didn't say they were going to do, just going out of the way. Um, people come to you and they tell you this is who I am, and then they go ahead and do something else, and you're wondering, we didn't discuss this. Okay, now as leaders, as young leaders in the school, I don't know if secondary schools have manifestos. This, when I was, okay, I was assistant head girl, and before we got to that position, they had to ask us, what are you going to do? What are the things, what, what are the plans that you have to do? But we see these days, do people really do that? Do they say what they really want to do? And does social media have an influence? I don't know if you understand my question. Okay, so social media, I'm gonna show my age a little bit, but... Um, <laughs> I remember when Facebook went off campus and became, mm. you know, open to the whole wide world. And so I don't join the chorus of voices who make out that social media is this terrible phenomenon. And I'll say why. I think social media has created networks. And I think mm. back to this issue of knowing who you are, you can find like minds across the world and that effect is something that we can thank social media for a small person a young person can cause it can have a huge impact and change thanks to social media so i'm team social media all the way but here's the th clarifications the first is that you then have to move from a place of knowing what you stand for what you want for your life. The previous speaker had already mentioned something like that. If you journal, if you have spoken into your future, then you'll find similar minds, people with a similar ethos, people going through some of the same challenges. Social media shines a light on people going through challenges. You realize that what you think you're the only person going through, other people are going through as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm not joining you to bash social media, sorry. Okay. <laughs> that's, I think that's the only clarification I'll make at this point. Okay, uh, before you speak, please. Um, I don't know if we 
if we heard one of the finalists for the competition, she said something about sextortion, how that is a prevailing problem. So I'd just like us to discuss how our values will not be compromised using social media. I know that a lot of young people go through that problem because of their involvement with social media, right? So yes, I just want us to throw more light on. Sextortion. Yes, sextortion, how that they take pictures, um, make videos of them, and then use it to harass them, use it to blackmail them, you know, and how we can, um, how social media will not compromise our values. Yes, I, I'm actually pro social media too. <laughs> I, I am. I don't think we would media. be here without it. Yes, to exactly, be um, exactly. I think gatherings like this show the yeah. good side. Yes. Um, yes. Lady, <laughs> are you, are you going to take this? Okay, yes, I will. I, I can also add to it. Okay, so how to avoid sextortion. Hmm. One thing that I live by is I always assume that whatever it is I sent to somebody could be shared on social media the next day. This includes messages, videos, voice notes, pictures. Just assume that somebody can share it. It doesn't mean they will share it, but just assume that when you're chatting with somebody, it could be on newspapers the next day. And so it helps me a lot, and I think it's going to help you as well. Before you send something, would you be proud to have your mom or your dad find out? Would you be proud to have the people who you lead find out would you be proud to have your friends find out? That is the number one way to avoid it. <clears throat> now, I don't even know if I should mention this because um, it also boils down to owning up to your mistakes, right? In case it happens, because of course things like that could happen. It boils down to owning up to your mistakes. And if, if it's happened, if it's done, please submit yourself to authority. Go and report yourself, because if you don't, you subject yourself to blackmail. Go and report yourself. It's a mistake. Mia, I forgive you. <laughs> Robert, please, go ahead and report, because the old that a lot of sextortionists have on you, a lot of blackmailers, is your silence. And please, when you see, especially as leaders, when you see people fall into traps like that, don't judge them. Don't be like, ah, she's a bad girl. Uh -uh, so that's what she has been doing. Wow. No, you don't do that. You stand up for them, especially because it's International Day of the Girl Child. You stand up for them. You rally support for them. That, okay, this has happened, but we are going to stand up for you. And by the way, it is a crime. Sextortion is actually a crime. You leak somebody's nudes and somebody, it is a crime. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop there. Yes, I do. Um, you know, I mentioned, uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I feel so, a little, sometimes I'm a little sad for you guys, and I'll explain. Mm -hmm. It's because mistakes used to be forgotten, or, you know, they... They, we, they, we would talk about them, it was a two week matter and that would be it. And so that's, for better or for worse, that's not how today's world is. So what my lady with balls has just said, which is that everything you say right can be transmitted, can be shared that same multiplier effect that allows you to make impact for good can also rebound on you. And so you want to be sure that you can manage the consequences of these things. Uh, we haven't actually evolved as people to manage the sheer amount of information that we're getting yet. We, we evolved to be in villages. We're not supposed to be with, like you, you probably saw this many people twice a year. Now you see this number of people like every day. So we are pleading with you. It's not even so much about you necessarily being a bad person or anyone being a bad person. Mistakes happen, but it's by handing over our power. 
Secrets thrive in darkness. Once you put light on something, it's never going to be as bad as you think it will. It will be a two-week phenomenon at best. But you get into the point where you're now, you know, feeling like you don't have anywhere to go. You do have places to go. You do have people to speak to. Help is available. So please don't allow anyone, even if it's already happened, make you think that you're alone because you're not. Wow. A round of applause for that, Chris. Okay, let's talk about value check. But before we do values check, uh, I'd like to ask, how do we become people of value? How do you think that young people can, you know, identify this phenomenon and say that I want to have this type of value, I want to do this, I want to, this, this would be my driving force, or something like that? Yes, you can. So you need, someone asked me yesterday about what I would tell young people, and I think curiosity is very important. You need to stay curious, and I find that some of you can be rather jaded, and I'm saying this not in a shady way, it's because I have a 16-year-old, so trust me, I am coming exactly from, you can be a bit jaded, and I think it's important to stay curious, to stay in an attitude of wanting to learn. Try to figure out why. So I say to my son that I would prefer that he try to create content rather than consume content all the time. And that attitude, if you're trying to create content, then you're learning, for example, how to edit, you're learning what style to do, you're learning how to animate, you're learning how to draw. And the point is when you spend your time creating, what's that law about energy? Energy can somebody, there's, there must be a physics student here. Energy can neither be what? Exactly. So, but when you put your energy into the things that bring value, by creating value, you give so much to yourself, right? If you decided that you were going to break down, I don't know, to remind me of a, a crab cycle, and then you went into it and you started talking about it and you made a series about it or TikTok. You would find other science geeks like yourself. You would, And that's the point. If you put this energy out as how can I give back, how can I share, how can I learn, you'll find your people who also want to give back and share. A lot of the problems we're having in the world today is because everybody wants to consume and keep and hoard. Like, think about... like. All these people that want to be like the richest people, what do they, you know, how many cars you can literally only be in one car at a time? So, by having an attitude of, I'm gonna give, because you see, the hand that is giving is also open to receive. So, that's the first way to even plug into how can I, if you are asking how I can help, and for you to be here, it's because that's probably your nature anyway. You're the helpful person who puts up their hand, who knows things, who tries to share. So stay on that track. That's, that's the way to keep, you know, keep your values alive. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, um, I just want you to add to that, but um, tell us some of the daily practices or habits that help you to stay grounded in your values. Okay, um, when it comes to values, where, where I would start from, from is you need to make a decision that there are, there are things I will never be caught doing. There are things I will never be caught saying. There are places I will never be caught visiting. Values start from setting boundaries for yourself. So you realize that as a human being, there are a lot of lapses, there are a lot of loopholes, but there, there, there must be things that you know, mm -mm, I won't go there. Values are things you want people to know about you. You want people to say, okay, you know what, when we talk about Esther, I don't know if we have any Esthers in the house. My middle name is Esther, so I use that as an example a lot. <laughs> there's no Esther. Wow. Okay. okay. All right, so 
there should be things that people can say about you. So that if anything happens, people will be able to say, Esther, I'm very sure that she cannot do it. And it's so important because people are watching you. People are talking about you. People are recommending you for stuff. And, you know, take it away from yourself for an instance. Who would you like to work with? A person who is known for lying. A person who is known for backbiting. A person who is known for not doing what they said they would. Who would you, or somebody who always says the truth. And you know, um, one thing about saying the truth always as a value is the fact that people may not like you, but they will trust you. And your goal is not to be liked. It is to be trusted at every point in time. So if I can be trusted to get the job done, you don't need to like me. I will do the job. If I can be trusted to not go to certain places, even if there are rumors, I know you, you, we often say in every rumor there's an altar of truth. Even if there are rumors, before it gets to tables, they were like Esther and uh, she couldn't have been there. It's very, very important. One of the things that gets me to stay grounded is being accountable. You need to be accountable to yourself. You need to have friends that you're accountable to and who are also accountable to you, then there should be people who can call you out on your bullshit. There should be people who can say, Esther, sorry, Esther, this time. <laughs> there should be people who can say, Esther, that thing you did is nonsense. There should be people who can say, this is not right. If all the people you have around you are the people who only tell you what you want to hear, they are being dishonest with you. And if you as the person who only tells people what is nice, what they want to hear, you are not being a good friend to them. So it's very important to be accountable, right? There are people I know, if they see me tweet something out of place, they've sent me a DM, they've given me a call, I can pull the tweet down, I can pull the posts down, because there are people who keep you accountable. And of course, back to faith. I know that, personally, I have so a higher power that I'm going to be accountable to. So it just helps, it helps me reduce my any illness at every point in time. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for that. A round of applause, please. Okay, how many of us like stories? If you like stories, let me see your hand. Okay, so we're going to be hearing their stories. I know that um, they've been giving us things to do, but I'd just like to ask, um, is there an instance that your values have been tested, and how did you navigate it? Now, hold on. Before you answer that question, I know that um, we have leaders here, and they've probably told the school they were going to do some things, and maybe an instance came that their friends, maybe um, one of the things they're going to do would cost them their friends, or would cost them you know, their popularity, or being liked. Right. So it, have you been in that kind of instance before? Has your values been checked, been, been checked before? And how did you navigate that instance? So Both of you, you're going to... So when Erika was talking about, um, you know, she said, you, you said something that really struck me and I started smiling and I didn't know that that was going to be the next question. Okay. You said, um, when you find, when you hear something about yourself or people say something about you and then there are other people who say, no, that could never be her. And I smiled because, and I didn't know that you were gonna go there next. You see, you can have all the fancy ideals. Life will test you, you know, life is a series of tests. And it will be when you are faced with the decision that you realize, can I actually hold on to what I believe? I worked in an organization, you know, there's a stereotypic, there's a stereotype of uh, a particular type of uh, Nigerian leader in the workplace who will put their lifestyle ahead of obligations to the business. So bills, salaries, you know, all those, will come after they've taken care of themselves and their own wants and needs. And so it's fine when everything is rosy, when there is enough to do that. But sometimes there are challenges, maybe payments are delayed, things are not as, you know, there's not as much spare 
money. And so then you start to realize this is a problem. And so I worked in an organization like that. And um, we started having challenges because we could no longer meet obligations to our staff who were working, you know? And that's a terrible position to be in because people are working and things were not even as bad in Nigeria as they are right now. So you can imagine, but people are working and at the end of the month, their salaries are late and you're scrambling around. And so I did scramble around, look for what we call the, the grown-ups who know when you look for bridging finance to just try to manage things. And my efforts, not only were they not appreciated, I was later like castigated for, you know, trying to keep things running. And that particular work relationship ended up ending, you know, like I was fired for that. And then it wasn't enough to be fired. People then went around accusing me of, you know, mismanaging the business. And it's funny when you said there have to be people who can speak up for you because mm. I have, a I had, because she's actually passed away now. And you, so when you said that, I remembered her. She heard everything and marched over to my house to say, so like me. I heard this and this, and I refuse to believe it. It can absolutely not be true. There is no way you did this and this. And then I explained. And she said, I knew, you know, like, when they were saying these things, it just didn't add up. And so, first of all, because you, as you can imagine, you've been fired for doing the right thing, but, you know, so you're already at home feeling sorry for yourself, feeling miserable. And so hearing that was a validation that, in fact, I'm glad that I lived up to what's to what my ideals, my values, which is that people cannot work and we will not make sh do everything possible to make sure that they get paid. Um, so that's my story. Okay, uh, turn, a round of applause, please. But our time is fast spent and we really have to go. But I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you got something. I hope you paid attention. A round of applause for yourselves. Yes. <laughs>